Hi. Um, we, just to say, Lockdown Puppy was a great idea and it's been keeping us going, so it's a really positive thing. But she's, just, she's a standard poodle, a big poodle, and she just gets over-exuberant when she wants to play in the garden. It's about getting our attention. And now that her big teeth are coming in, she's five months, here she is. Oh, I can um, see her. She's beautiful. She's five months. You know, it's, we just need to have a strategy to distract her, really, and get her to get our attention without nipping and barking and growling. This is an interesting right. one, Graham. Phoebe does look like she's trying to play, but perhaps going about it the wrong yeah. way. I think that's right. Um, so, um, standard poodle, for those who don't know, a standard poodle is, is a big dog, right? Don't think cockapoo, think halfway to Great Dane, but with more fluff. Um, <laughs> so, a dog like that who's learning to nip, not so good. The good news is five months old, I think you said, Jane. So, um, adult tooth will be, teeth will be coming through about now, sometime soon. Often the nipping behaviour changes anyway about that time. Um, this is typical puppy stuff. So, if you kind of ride the storm you'll probably be okay however um I, I don't expect you to just sort of sit around and be a pin cushion until that takes place so um why not distract her with a toy that she'd rather play with instead so you're saying don't nip me but do you know jump into this thing now here's the thing about that the timing's got to be just right because if she's nipping you and you bring out her favorite toy she goes ah Excellent. So she makes that connection. Right. So I bite you and then my toy comes along. You can see how that would be rewarding the wrong behavior. So you, you've got to wait until she stopped doing it and then give her an alternative instead. And in the meantime, do your very best not to move quickly uh, or, or scream or shout or anything like that, which frankly is what comes naturally when you've got a dog nipping you. <laughs> so lots to think about there. Uh, is that helped you any, Jane? Yes, I, I mean, it is helpful. I think it's just any distraction strategy at the moment, and we'll just have to make sure we've got some things placed in suitable places, um, I think. I mean, she's lovely, everything else. There's no, you know, it's just this particular issue that we need to work through. I'm sure yeah. you'll work through it just fine. But I was told, uh, Graham, when, when I had my puppy and she was doing the, the nipping thing, that whenever when you're playing with your dog and they nip you, that you just stop playing, you drop the toy and you ignore them and look away. And they get the point that when they do that, they get no attention. Is that is that right? Yeah, um, that's not a bad start point, I've got to say. Um, but there's the the trouble is, Tom, there's a limit, isn't there? Um, and if it if it works, great. Because uh, the, the first thing is not to move around. Um, remember, a puppy's a, a a baby predator, really, in a way. So the the part of the the thinking up here is, uh, if I nip it, I kind of half expect it to move and squeal. So if you move very quickly, it often makes it worse. So. Stop and do nothing is a great start point, but sometimes dogs will just carry on biting and nipping. And well, as a dog owner, stop, you know what those those little needle oh. teeth are like. You oh. can't ignore everything. Oh, no, you certainly can. Uh, who are we going to help next? I love that baby predator. Um, let's speak to Jess now in Leicestershire. So she's got a five month old cocker spaniel called Bonnie, who's obsessed with one of her toys and is wondering if this is the right type of behaviour. Oh, okay, Jess, tell us your problem. Hi, yeah. Um, so we've got this ball for Bonnie um, for Christmas, and we call it Barky Ball. Um, so at first she was really nervous of the ball and didn't want to go near it because it makes noises when you move it. Uh, but now she loves it and will ask for it every day. But she barks all the time she's playing with it. Um, so we just want to ask, is this, okay? this behaviour okay? Oh, Graham, the Cocker Spaniel, just absolutely beautiful. What would you say? Bless her. Well, a cocker spaniel called Bonnie, and isn't she just, eh? Um, so, um, uh, well, you've got a ball called Barky Ball. There's your first mistake. Uh, <laughs> um, only joking. Um, I think uh, it's fairly normal. I wouldn't worry about it. But, yes, it may be the kind of thing that you want to discourage because you probably want to be a good neighbour, right? Um, and we don't want to teach her that, actually, every time she's got a ball, any ball in the future, that she just barks her head off. So if you want to get a bit less of the barking, I think the easy way to do it is, is you say, right, okay, if you're barking too much, you get too excited, then I'd just pick the ball up and go, no, that's, that's it, you've, you've blown it, right? And then when she quietens down, she'll continue to bark for a few seconds. When she's quiet again, that's when I'd give her the ball back. So you make the connection. If you're too barky, no, end of, that's the end of the play. But if you calm down again, yeah, okay, you can have your ball back and then she'll learn. There's rules. Does that help, Jess? That's great. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much for calling. It's interesting, it feels like what you're saying is it's all about communication with your dog and the communication with your dog, and, and you you cover this in the book as well, uh, your communication with your dog is probably one of the most important parts. It's how you're going to talk to them in your own way. Yeah, when I, when I sort of sat down to plan what I was going to put in the book, um, I, I thought, yeah, I really need to explain how, how we communicate with dogs and how dogs perceive what we're doing in terms of the sound we make, the look on our faces and everything, how they read our faces, but also what they're trying to tell us. So if you've ever looked at a dog and thought, what's he trying to tell us, then there's a lot of information on that, really, how to read a dog. Right, let's get one more call so in. Interesting. Yes, let's go to Alice in Bristol now. Alice, what's your problem? Hi, um, so we've got an older cockapoo who got to go to training classes and strangers would come up and give him loads of attention, um, whereas our, our new puppy um, can't really socialise with other dogs um, and he's sort of, as soon as we get him out of the car and walks, he barks at the first few lots of people and he doesn't like other dogs yet. Um, so, yeah. So how would you handle a dog that doesn't like other dogs? Okay. Well, I mean, great that you've phoned in, Alice, because this is a problem that lots of people are having right now. So uh, so what's happening with Bailey is he's, he's clearly not met many other dogs. So he's just thinking, problem, problem. You know, I, I don't know. They're okay. They're friendly. I'm scared. So when dogs are scared, nervous, the first thing they do is they bark, you know, and it can turn in later life to, you know, a bit of, a bit of aggression, frankly. So um, how to get him used to dogs when actually we all have to social, socially distance? Well, actually, probably that's the first clue isn't it um go to a greater distance so if you can go to a park where and there's lots of lovely parks i think in bristol where you can be at a distance from other dogs but see them so you get used to the sight of dogs the sound of them in the distance but it's not on top of him then you've got some good behavior to to praise i.e if he's doing nothing just walking nicely with you you get to say oh good boy that's that's fine and then over a period of days and actually weeks frankly and in tiny little in increments you, you you aim to get a bit nearer to where people are a bit nearer a bit nearer and he, he, it's just about making him comfortable with it and then taking your time so yeah we've all got this problem i think right now because over the last few months we haven't really been able to socialize in a normal way but those times will come back so it's about getting him used to it